Hello and welcome to the 49th video in this beginner series for programming in C. So in this video we're going to carry on looking at reading and writing to file but we're going to write data this time. So we're going to write it instead of in text format that you can see by opening the written file in a text editor, we're actually going to write it in binary format in the form of ones and zeros. And we can use this format to write things like, for example here, that I've typed deft, a structure. We could write any number of these structures to a file and then read these structures back in then when we start the program next time. And over the next two or three videos that's what we're going to do. We're going to make an array of num data entries, so three entries. In this array we'll have three lots of my data and we'll write them to a data file, a binary file, and then we'll read this data back in and, and print it to the screen. And maybe in after we've done that, we'll actually show how you can look inside a file for a structure at a particular position, say. But I'll decide on whether we do that later on. So for now, what we need to do is actually create uh, our data array. So, and I've gone through the introduction a little bit quickly there because I'm assuming it all makes sense now because we've covered structures and things quite a lot in the past few videos. So we've got data array, and I'll call this num data. And making an array of structures is actually the same way. You remember the shortcut for making a structure by putting the values in these uh, curly braces. Well, we can do this also with an array of structures in this way, like so. And I'm just going to make up a space so we can actually read it. And so we want to define num1 first. So I'll call this 10 and then 20 and then 30. And then we need to give each of our structures a name, which calls an imagination. So I'll call it dog and beer and uh, what else do I want to call it? I'll call it Iguana. Iguana. I was reading about Iguanas and something in America the other day. So dog beer and Iguana. There we are. Now let's have a number and we'll call it 111.123 uh, and we'll call it 222.456 and we'll say 333.789. You realize in the structure above here that I've got an int, num1, and then I've got 16 characters to hold the name, and then I've got a double here, so a decimal point number called num2. So for each of these structures in our array, we've got the integer, the characters, and the decimal number here. Now before we do anything else, what we need to do is write a function that we'll call print data, and we're going to write something that actually prints our data to the screen, so we'll take in a pointer to our data, in this way, which is essentially the same as an array. And now we'll initialize our index that we're going to use to index the array in our for loop, like so. And now we can just say for index equals naught. We'd actually need to put the equals naught here because it's already naught, but I like to do it. Less than num data and plus plus index. Oops. And now let's just write a quick printf. And this is stuff that's all been covered before, I'm afraid, but hey ho, no harm done in going over it again. So we'll print the name first, so percentage s, then we'll print num1, and then we'll print the double. I'm going to use a percentage f for that, but I'm actually going to do you put a dot, so a period, and a three to limit it to three decimal places. And then a new line character in there. And now we need to access our data array at the relevant point of index. So we type data with the square braces and index and now we can use the dot operator to access the value we need. So we've got dot name and I'll just be lazy and copy this twice here. We'll have dot num1 and we'll have dot num2. So this should print then our complete array to the screen. So I'll just go to print data and call it down the bottom here and we we'll just send our data array as the argument. We don't need the address and sign here, remember, because we're sending in an array here, which is essentially already a, a pointer to some allocated data. So I'll just um, off screen where embarrassing errors can't be seen, compile. It seems to have compiled. So I'll just bring this back up here. And now I can run the uh, program and you can see that we get dog, beer, iguana with the 10, 20, 30 and so on structures as expected printed to the screen. Uh, if you're on Windows remember use exactly the same line as this to compile uh, but to run the program just type ch49 rather than the dot and forward slash as you do for the Mac or for Linux.
So all's well and good, we've printed our structures to the screen and what I want to do in this video then is actually write these structures to file. So we're going to make a function above the main and I'm going to call this write data, oops I actually need to say what type it returns, so void and write data to file. And we'll take in again our data, uh, a pointer to our data just as we did before. Okay, and actually it's very simple to do this. We follow a very similar method as to what we did in the previous text file writing videos where we'll uh, make file pointer to file like so. And now we want to open our file exactly as we did in the previous videos with the text writing. And really I need to learn to spell. So we simply call the fopen and we want to specify the name, so we'll call this my data, and now I'm going to call it .bin. You remember from the previous video that it actually doesn't matter what your file extensions are. Um, you specify them normally so that certain programs can uh, recognize the files that are supposedly meant to be for them. But I showed, I demonstrated with the text, you can actually put anything you want or nothing. And so long as it's the right data type in there that's being read, it'll be read by the program. But it's good usually with data files, particularly to use a .bin or maybe a .dat, D-A-T, so that we know that this is a binary file or the user knows it's a binary file. And we want to read sorry not read we want to write so we have a w just like with text but a key difference is we actually put a b here so that we're saying that we're writing a binary file and that's the only difference between this and writing a text file so the next thing we need to do is actually write our data to the text file and to do that we use a function called f write and f write takes four bits of information the first bit of information is where we're writing from. So it's uh, where we're writing from, where from. I'm going to type in words and then I'll rewrite over this. Then for each element that we're going to write, we need to say what size the element is. So we say size of element. And then we want to say the number of elements that we're writing to the file. And finally, we want the stream that we're writing to, which is obviously our file pointer. So what we're essentially saying is we're going to write, or in our case, three lots of elements that are the size of our structure. And we'll take those three elements from our data structure and we'll write them to our file pointer. So I put data in here. Size is we use the size of operator. So we'll just say size of and then my data. Oops, not tada, data. Gosh, really can't spell, rusty. And then we're going to say the number of elements we're going to write. And we'll say num data. And then we'll say what stream we're writing to, which is obviously our file pointer. Now I'm doing this as fast as possible. Obviously there's no checking here that we're writing more elements that actually exist in our array and things like this, but um, just for demonstration on how things work, there are some assumptions in here that everything's okay, as we know it is. Now next thing we need to say, actually between here, before we write, we should really say if pointer file is not equal to, whoops, null, N-U-L-L, then let's do something because otherwise it means we've actually had an error. So I'll actually just put that in here now just for completion. So we'll say print F um, error writing. It's not a very descriptive error. It should be error, uh, I suppose, opening file or whatever, but um, I don't want to take forever. So good. So if we've actually got a pointer to our file, then let's write the data. And the last thing we need to do then is just, as in the previous videos, call fclose and on our p file. And that's all there is to it. And when we run this uh, function, then we should have a file sitting in our directory, the same as our source file directory, called mydata.bin with a few bytes in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call write data to file below the print data on the data array and then off screen because I've probably made a load of spending mistakes I'm going to quickly compile again and it does indeed compile 
which has surprised me somewhat. And now just run the program. We've got our structures printed out, but more crucially, if I go to the directory where I've actually got my um, files stored here, you'll see that we've got a mydata.bin now of 96 bytes inside there, which means we have written our data to a file. Now, at the moment, you'll have to take my word for it that we've actually written the data that we wanted to write, namely our structure data, to this file. And what we're going to do in the next video is actually read this data back out and store that then, then in a new array, not um, in the same array that we created in this program, and then print that to the screen just to show that everything was written to the file OK. So thanks very much for watching this video. I uh, hope it made some sense and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.